Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the maths A-level content for the first year. Here we're looking at quadratic inequalities so you can answer questions from exercise 3e. So quadratic inequalities, you briefly saw this at GCSE but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little bit tricky at the time. So we've got a little three step process that we go through when we solve quadratic inequalities. First of all we need to solve the quadratic equation. So we we'll take your quadratic inequality turn that inequality into an equal sign and solve that equality. Sketch a graph of the equation so we know how to sketch graphs of quadratics. We remember that the roots of the quadratic equation are going to be the intersection points in our graph and decide which, uh, which side of the graph we're going to want. Um, remember, uh, so if we want the part of the graph that's greater than zero, we want it to be on top and if we want it to be less than zero, it's going to be on the bottom. Okay, let's go through an example to show you what I mean. So we were going to first want x squared minus 4x minus 5 to be less than zero. So the first thing we need to do is solve the quadratic equation. So here's the quadratic equation. Turn the equality into an equal sign and solve this quadratic equation. Now we've done this quite a while ago. And the way we can do this is by factorising and then solving to find the roots of the equation. So x is minus 1 and x is 5. This helps us sketch the graph. So what does the graph look like? Well, it will have intersection points at minus 1 and 5. So we've done part 1 and we've done part 2 in this sketch now. And now is the important bit. We need to decide which is the required set of values. Now what we want is our graph to be less than zero. So think of this as the zero marker for the y equals uh, x squared minus 4x minus 5 line. So this is when the value of y is equal to zero. We want that y value to be less than zero for y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. So we want this blue section of the graph here. So the x values that go in between minus 1 up to 5. So our answer here is minus 1 is less than x is less than 5. We have a region that's in between minus 1 and 5 that we want as our final answer. OK, let's go through another example here, slightly more challenging with uh, difficult numbers. 3 minus 5x minus 2x squared is less than 0. So what we could do is completely switch around this problem and add everything onto the other side. It would create an effectively similar problem. Uh, however, we're going to do it slightly different here. What we're going to do is straight away solve the equation. So what we'll do here is we'll times through by minus 1. And we solve the quadratic equation by factorising. So x is either equal to 0 0.5 or x is either equal to minus 3. From this we can sketch the graph. Now remember we're going to be sketching this graph here. So we need it to be a negative 2x squared graph. So upside down with intersections at 3 and minus 3 and 0 0.5. Now just like we did in the previous example, we want this graph to be below the zero line. We want our equation to be below this line here where y is equal to zero. So we want this section of the graph again. But unlike the other question, we have two distinct separate regions that we want our x value to be in between. So we want it to be below the zero line here. And given that we've got two separate regions, one here and one here, we need two separate inequalities. For the left hand bit, we need x to be less than minus three. And then you write or and for the right hand bit we want x to be bigger than 0 0.5 so that we get the um, bottom half of the curve here. Okay, so moving on to a bit of a tougher question now, but this is a very um, common question that the exam board gives us. Find the values of x for which the equation this has two real roots. Now we've done this previously, if we've got two real roots, the immediate thing that should be springing into your mind is b squared minus 4ac, two real roots, is greater than zero. So out of this we're going to pull out 
what we need for our quadratic formula. So sub in the values of a, b, and c. So remember, the value in front of x squared, that's a. The value in front of the x is b. And both of these terms at the end, that's c. So substitute those into your inequality. And just rearrange your inequality a little bit. So expand in all those brackets, and we can divide through by 4 as well. So this is our question that we now need to answer. So using what we've done previously, the first checkpoint in our um, method is going to be solve the equality. Uh, so the way we'll do that is by times and through by minus 1, factorising and finding the, um, finding the k values of 6 and minus 4. So that's checkpoint 1 done. Checkpoint number 2 is now to go and sketch this graph here. So remember, it's a negative k squared graph, and it needs to be bigger than 0. So when you draw your negative k squared graph, that needs to be upside down, going through 6 and minus 4, so just like this. And we want the section of the graph that's bigger than the 0 line. So remember, this line here is where y is equal to 0. So we want the part of the graph where y equals minus k squared uh, plus 2k plus 24 is bigger than 0, so we want this section of the graph here. So that's going to mean it's this blue region here, so it's in between minus 4 and 6. So given that it's just one specific region in between two boundaries, we're going to write one inequality in between two boundaries, minus 4 up to 6. Okay, so a very common question this. Make sure you have plenty of practice at this when you go through the questions in the examples, in the exercises. Okay, moving on to a slightly different one to do with quadratic inequalities now is this type of question here, where we have a fraction over x. So usually when we have a fraction over x, all we do is we just times through by x and uh, divide through by that 2, and we've got that x is less than 3. However, this is not quite right when we've got inequalities, because remember, we need to do something funny when x is a negative number. So what about when minus 1? Uh, we'd have to flip the inequality the other way around if we were to set x equal to minus 1. So this is not the way that you do this question. Okay, What we're going to have to do as well is we're going to have to take into account the fact that x could be a positive number or a negative number. So the way that we can transform a either positive or negative number into a definitely positive number is by squaring it. So what we're going to do instead is times by x squared on both sides, because we know that no matter what value x is, x squared is always going to give us a positive value. So let's see how that works. We have times both sides by x squared. On the top here, we will have cancelled out one of those x's to leave us just with 6x. And on the right-hand side, we've got 2x squared. So now we've got a quadratic inequality that we now need to solve. So how would we do this? Well, let's take away the 2x squared onto the left-hand side. And now we go through our three-point checklist. So first thing is solve the equation and uh, draw the graph. So we've got intersection points here when x equals 0 and when x equals 3. And it's an upside-down graph because we have a negative quadratic graph. We want the section of the graph that's bigger than the zero marker, so we want the graph in this region here. So our answer here is going to be this part here. So we've got one single region bounded by two values, so we want one single inequality bounded by two values. Right then, have a go at some of these questions on your own, pause the video and try your best. Right, okay, well done for pausing the video and having a go at these. Let's, uh, let's go through our three-point checklists with both of these. So the first thing we do is we turn it into an equality. So x squared minus 11x plus 24 equals 0. And we're going to solve this by factorising. So 
I think we need a minus 8 here and a minus 3 here. That will times together to make plus 24 from the double negative and minus 11 when we add them. So on our graph, we're going to have uh, intersections at 3 and at 8. And it was a positive x squared graph, so I'm going to draw my graph like this. And we want the region of the graph that's less than the zero marker. So we want this section of the graph here. We want the y coordinates to be less than zero. So given that we have one section of our graph that this uh, satisfies, bounded by two uh, values, we want one inequality that's bounded by two values. Three is less than x, is less than eight. Okay, very similar for this one over here. The first thing we do is we set it equal to an equation and we then factorize to find out the intersection points on our graph. So we've got x is five and x is minus two. So on our quadratic graph here, we're gonna have minus two here and five over here. And this time it's still a positive quadratic graph, so it's going to be a smiley face shaped graph. And this time we want our region to be bigger than the zero marker, so we want it to be the top part of this region here. So we want this section here and this section here. Now the x values here are going to be less than minus 2 and bigger than 5. Okay, so these are the regions that we want um, to satisfy this equation here. Right, thanks very much for watching. Remember that uh, you need to have a go now at questions from exercise 3e. Watching this video is good, but it's not going to get you the whole way there to understanding this topic. Have a go at some questions, really persevere through the difficult ones, and ask your question, ask your teacher if you need any help. Great, thanks for watching.